hi guys welcome to another video so today we're looking at art supplies that are really gorgeous and also affordable so all of the art supplies today I'm not sure if they're all they're probably all under ten dollars everything that I'm going to show you today so I'm really excited about it I think that it's a really they're all really beautiful products and they'll all elevate your artworks so you know introducing them into whatever supplies that you have will help to elevate you know whatever you're creating and they are supplies that will not break the bank so uh, first of all here I'm just grabbing out a couple of pencils that we're going to look at today so we're going to look at um, sort of a, a range of some of my favorite art supplies so you can see here so I'll show you examples of everything and then you know how it works um, what it looks like and the different ways that you can use it so I actually picked up these Derwent XL graphites they were just on sale at so in the clearance section at Jerry's when we were there in December so I got two colors and this was just me sort of trying them out and I absolutely love them I think I got them for around four dollars each I think they generally go for about five dollars so I will link everything I can link below and I just think uh, these just I was really impressed with how beautiful they are and they will definitely be something that I will be doing more studies with and tonal works and things this coming year I've also gotten some questions like between student grade watercolors, artist grade watercolors and you know how to build um, a palette and things like that and these are going to help your palette no matter whether you have a student grade or artist grade they will um, really enhance that palette. So I've just got a range of really high quality supplies that are a very low price point. And today we're going to be using the this is the art journal that we created on the channel so you can go back and watch the videos about how this was created and everything but i really wanted to just use some of the paper in here so the first thing we're going to look at is the windsor and newton gold ink so this is a long-standing favorite of mine i think this is my seven or eighth bottle and um, it goes for around five dollars and then this is a the nib pen that I generally use all the time. The nib holder comes from Jackson's Art for around two or three dollars, and the nibs come from Jet Pens for about six dollars for six. So they are a little bit hard to find in stock. I think thanks to all of you, they keep coming in stock and selling out within about twenty four to forty eight hours. So. If you have been on the waiting list, just um, I'd recommend signing up at Jet Pens. And I've also had a few questions about the um, ink dripping off the nib. So you just want to make sure that the ink is actually shaken up enough. So you want to make sure that all the solids on the bottom is um, shook up and that will take a couple of minutes probably. And then you also want to make sure that the nib is prepared properly. So I'll do a whole separate video on that. But you can see how stunning it is and you can use it with a paintbrush or with a dip pen. So this next uh, thing we're going to look at is the... What even is it? It's... So this is the Technalo pencil in Carm uh, Carmine, Lake, Carmine Lake. So it's a watercolour graphite in a pencil, but it's got a little bit of like a hematite violet undertone. And then this one here is my favourite uh, one that I use all the time. It's the Faber-Castell um, graphite aquarel. So just watercolour lead pencil, just your regular uh, graphite but but I absolutely love it. And then when I want a little bit of something extra, a bit more elegance, I use this Technalo one. And you'll see here that the Carmine Lake undertones are very subtle, but they just add a little bit of something in the artwork. So both of these I think are around two or three dollars. And again, they're just going to give your artwork that little bit of an extra edge.
You can see that the difference there is a subtle one, but uh, I will show you how I use these in an artwork in a minute and you'll be able to see that it does um, you know make uh, quite an impact if you want it to depending on how you know light or dark you use it and so all of these things are in my regular lineup for you know things that I use constantly for the last few years so I really love them all but these are a new addition and I feel like these are going to be around um, in the same way they're gonna be constants for me so the, they are the graphite, the Derwent Graphite XL. So they're these large blocks and they, they do make your fingers quite dirty, but um, you can use them several different ways. So I'm just showing you here. I'm having a hard time swatching because the um, paper is kind of on an angle here and I'm sitting at a weird angle. Um, generally when I you know am working, I'll have my book to the side, like tilted. Um, on an angle but because I'm trying to show you you know I want it just to look nice in the frame so it's on a bit of a weird angle for me but anyway so you can use the you know use them to make thin lines to create thick lines and then you can also use them with a watercolor brush which is what I will be doing so um, I'm actually thinking of a way that I can put these I keep trying to make these little travel palettes and I've wanted to go on several little adventures with you but um, everything just sort of keeps falling through it's you know been a hard year so but I still keep planning for it and hoping for it so I am thinking of a way that I can make these a little bit more travel friendly but for now I'm just really enjoying using them at my desk and you can see there that I'm using the side, not the top, because I don't want to, um, you know, I really like the way they're done and like the words, they're kind of debossed into it. So I just want, want that to stay pretty for a while. But um, hopefully you can see the soft granulation in these. And this one here is almost a little bit like a uh, hematite violet. So um, where a Daniel Smith tube is going to be around $12.00. This is going to be about $5 and you know, you get this beautiful result. And the same with the uh, top one that I'm using now, you could use this instead of a hematite, uh, Daniel Smith hematite, which again is about $12 and this will be about five. So it's just a really nice way to uh, introduce these into any type of watercolors that you have, no matter if they're student grade or artist grade, you can mix these with your watercolors and create beautiful mixes and uh, shading and um, you can see here that you can even just paint with these. Um, so I love how versatile these are and you will be seeing more of these on the channel. So uh, I think the two colors here that I got is the burnt umber and the soft. So the gray one is a little bit softer in tone than the art graph. So you will never get it as intense as like the art graph goes almost black. And this one just is, it stays more around a soft gray. Um, and so I'm just kind of trying to build up the layers here and show you, you know, they don't necessarily go very dark, which is what I like. Um, I like my contrast to be a little bit less audible, I say, a little bit more um, subdued. And so I'm looking for supplies that will um, sort of create some of that ambience just from the beauty of, you know, the granulation or um, sort of the color separation um, that it will possibly look like there's sort of a patina on the painting, you know, from that art supply. Okay, so we will come back and check that once it's dry, but let's go on to the next supply. So this is um, the Neo Color 2s and the Neo Color 1s um, from, are they from Karen Dash? So the Neo Color 2 are water soluble and the Neo Color 1 provide a really nice relief. 
So if you go back in my channel um, on Heirloom Lux, you'll see that I have had these for years and I have really loved these as well. So I believe the one here I'm swatching of the Neo Color 2s is the Silver Grey. And then the Neo Color 1 is the Silver. So I will again use these in a little rose that we'll paint just to show you kind of how I am thinking of using them. And sort of how I'm thinking of combining the two together with other mediums and supplies. And again, you don't need a whole set. You just need a couple that are going to complement the colours that you enjoy using or colours that you think, um, you know, will, again, um, you're looking at ways to elevate your art without needing every art supply. Um, and so that's kind of what this video is about. High quality uh, supplies that will just help enhance your work. So another, this was in my 2020 favorites, but I always love it. So it was the Ecoline brush pens as well. Uh, so this one here, this is an interesting one. And I have a video about this over on Heirloom Lux, but this is the uh, Food A number eight, I believe. So it is a fountain pen, fountain brush pen for inks. So um, we're just looking through here. So this is my art journal, my Travels Notebook art journal, and we will do a video on this as well. But you can see here, these are fountain pen inks and I was just testing out mixing them. Um, but you can actually put your fountain pen inks in this fountain brush pen and then use that for artworks as well. So, and this is probably the most expensive supply that I'm showing today. So this is about $13, but I really find it um, useful because you can, again, like use all these beautiful fountain pen supplies in the artwork. And uh, I suppose it works a little bit like a water brush could but it's designed for fountain pen inks. So I absolutely love it. And the line variation, again, we will do a little sample with that so you can see that in action, but it's really gorgeous. Okay, so two of my other favorite supplies. One is this Vanish Eraser. So you can see that I just cut off. So it's a long one and I'll cut off about a third and just use that because um, I find that like I always I'm always losing the erasers so I just use a little bit as I need it and then just get a clean piece and sort of keep doing that but and then this is here is the Stedler uh, graphite sharpener so so I forgot to mention that the eraser is about a dollar fifty and this um sharpener was five dollars at michael's which was pretty expensive for a sharpener but and so it doesn't do like a long point it just does a really nice job sharpening so you can use a coupon at michael's it's not as expensive as a brass sharpener um yeah it's a brass sharpener but it just does a really nice job it's a really high quality uh pencil sharpener and, you know, you have to put your shavings in a little, like, petri dish or something. But I just really enjoy this. Uh, it's got a really nice weight to it. It's just a really nice sharpener. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is try out some of these supplies. So we're going to start with the, um, the Derwent Extra Large Graphite. And we're sort of doing one of those stone cartouches over a door frame. And then I'm just going to sort of basically integrate all the different supplies and show you how they can be used in an artwork.
Okay, so you can see this is just a super quick sketch and it's not necessarily cohesive, but I just wanted to kind of get all the different um, supplies in to show you how you can, you know, use the ones that are water soluble, use the Neo Color One as like a relief, uh, so you can, you know, add some type of a watercolor or the graphite over the top of it. You can see how the Technalo pencil was used in the um, first part of the cartouche there that we did. And I just, I just really love all these supplies. And I guess this is a very neutral palette, but these are more um, supplies again that you can put in with any of your other, you know, brighter colors and these are sort of staples in my art toolkit so we're just going to go back into my art journal here so this is a chic sparrow a6 and it was a second chance and this is the alaric leather so i had never even heard of it i will link it below um, and then last year you can see here that in my actual planner i had this sort of commonplace book at the beginning and this is where I liked to swatch all of my uh, new supplies, new inks, try out different, uh, you know, things I was thinking about. So instead of, um, you know, moving out of it, so I moved to a B6 planner this year and I wanted to keep this kind of same A6 uh, situation because it's really just compact and easy to pull out if you want to just try something. And I figured that if I had a art journal, I can just keep using this year after year and replacing the Apica notebook. So this is a super gorgeous leather and I've just been really happy with it. Um, I want to see if there's anything else I want to finish setting up before I actually do a video on it. But I thought we'd just pull it out today and kind of I'll show you how this brush pen works. So I got this probably over a year ago, maybe two years ago, and I it comes with black ink in it, and I had actually put in rose gilt tint, Robert Oster rose gilt tint, which is a sparkle ink, and I felt like I had possibly damaged and ruined the pen because it just wasn't, nothing was coming out. So I think that the um, shimmer clogged the pen a little bit. So I've just put this one in because I know that it is you know a good it has a good flow so I just wanted to check that the pen was still working and I'm thinking of putting uh, a different ink in here that I will show you soon but I think this is just a super fun way again like to use your fountain pen inks and you can do brush lettering with it you can also just do like little you know lines on the page to write on or just different nice little things maybe create kind of hand drawn color swatch boxes or things like that so anyway um i'm just also going to do a little sketch here now 
of a rose so I started with the silver neo color one just to show you kind of how you can use that as a relief and put um, watercolors over the top of it and then I'm also using the neo color two in the silver gray because that's going to blend out and then I'm using this eco line as well because that also is water soluble and just gives quite a nice um, just the look that it gives when it um, when you add the water I just really enjoy it so and you'll see that in a minute okay guys so that is it for today's video it is a little bit of a longer one and so i apologize that i couldn't get it up yesterday i just could not get the um voiceover finished in time but um, i hope you're having a good week and i'm not exactly sure what videos are coming next it's just sort of depending at the minute on what um time i have i have a few things going on so um that the yeah, we'll see how it goes, but I will see you soon. Bye.